Hi y'all, Darren Hansbro from DA Components. Just going to do a new video uh, to talk about uh, wiring and what to avoid uh, in your van systems. So when you buy a pump controller from all the suppliers, they're all good quality and uh, absolutely fantastic once it's wired in correctly. So when I get uh, vans uh, and they want me to fix it for them, uh, what I generally find is the problem is is down to dodgy wiring. So this is what I'm going to talk about. Just to show you some examples of what I've fixed over the years. So the first of all, you've got your battery, uh, which is obviously a leisure battery, 12 volt leisure battery. And then most of the time, <laughs> or like all of, most of the time, and all the time I see, I see crocodile clips like this. And I see obviously this suspect one, and it's got tape wrapped around it. It's just been taped up and then last but not least this is probably the worst one i've ever seen is a jubilee clip with the conductor which is the cable the wire itself wrapped around it and it was just slid over the actual battery terminal it wasn't even tightened up so uh yeah i fixed that problem straight away so those are the first ones that i'd go to straight away i'd look at the battery look at see they've got these battery uh, crocodile clips which is a no-no and the Jubilee clip was just unreal. Now, I'm not saying that these don't work, but I'd advise you not to use them, but that's down to me, the way that I am. I'd always use a, battery, a proper battery terminal like so. It actually slides over the terminal, you use a 14 mil ring spanner and you tighten it up because once it's tight, that ain't moving. So when you're in your van and this is on your battery, and the, the pump's gone, vibration, and this, this could physically clip off as well. So, and what you will find is with battery terminals, they have a P on it, which is your positive, and they have a negative. Now, the negative won't slide over the port of the positive because it's just too wide. So you'll never ever get them mixed up. You can't buy two positives and put a positive on a negative. You've got to get the negative and the positive. So that's the two battery terminals that I advise. And then what you will find is you've got some uh, little screws here so you can put uh, different applications on so you get your positive and negative for your battery terminals. So then you come to wiring. What I do find, what I do see a lot is some vans come to me with cables like so and they wrap the cable around and it's all open to the element and they just leave it like that. And then a couple of days later they might think there's a fault and they pull it apart, they wrap it round, oh, put some tape on it like that. So now that there over time will get loads of moisture in there and it, the, the cable won't get its correct resistance once it's all switched on. So to me, that's a no-no as well. And then what you will find is a lot of people use these white chocker blocks. And what it is is basically just a little piece of steel in there or the screw, screws onto that cable. You push the other one into the other cable. And then basically all oh, that's open again to all the elements and everything and it's just not their pra their good practice and uh, with these like i say again i'm not saying it, it won't work but for good practice going forward uh, i'd recommend to change them to bullet connectors because uh, you get a nice better joint and it's got a bit of uh, insulation around the actual uh, connector as well and we do have a video on uh, doing that so yeah uh, we have that video already on YouTube. And then we come to uh, this type of cable, which is alarm cable. Now, I've had a van recently, and uh, they actually had this cable uh, wired up to the actual split charge relay. And uh, he had it for 10 years, and it was still working, believe it or not. But for good practice, I wouldn't use this type of cable uh, to run 12 volt systems, because you really want uh, the one mil uh tri, tri rated cable which is 16 amp this one draw and then last but not least i'm going to talk about uh fuse holders little inland fuse holders what you might find is uh these two look very similar it's slightly different in color slightly different color uh but what you will find is if you buy if you see these for sale and you buy them for like two pound fifty and you get a pack of 500 it's not the correct one the reason being is you see the you see the distance the gap in between that uh, silver connector there when you get the original one it's slightly darker in color but what you'll find the gap inside is a lot tighter compared to 
this one. Now what you will find, because I've came across it myself, when you get your cable and you slide it in and you crimp it over and you get your pliers and you just snap it shut, this silver connector here doesn't go, it doesn't cut into with the plastic uh, UPVC. It just doesn't cut into it until you get the correct one. Now the correct one, with that being so tight, that gap, it does actually clip incorrectly and it also cuts through the plastic uh, PVC and it's making the connection for the correct fuse holder. So that's my top tip on fuse holders. Just make sure you get the correct one so last but not least as for the wiring uh, once you get that sorted or you look into that is my uh <laughs> what are the what are the jobs they had uh quite quite recently actually uh, a guy came and uh, he swapped his van and got a new system in it or he swapped it in his new van and controller was flagging up pressure switch dead end detection every time was he was at work everything was and then throughout the day it's it just flagging up so anyway he brought it to me and i found out what the problem was, it was the outlet of the tank, believe it or not, on this occasion, because it's happened twice, <laughs> when that pipe, uh, the outlet hose came from the uh, tank into the, the strain of the pump, uh, the pump strainer, he had his spare wheel behind his seat, right, just after the bulkhead, and the spare wheel wheeled and it rested on top of the actual hose and with him having a full lot of water in his tank, when it got to halfway, the water was, because it was a gravity fed, the, the, the wheel was trapping the actual hose, so it wasn't forcing the enough water through, so it was restricting flow, and the controller flagged it up to dead end. So that was one of my top tips. Just make sure the outlet has been uh, uh, not like squashed with a wheel fragment sake. Then the next one was, uh, he swapped his system round and he had his, I think it was the outlet hose, went underneath the tank, came under into the actual pump with a 90 degree bend. And near enough the same thing was happening, was that work, fine. Gets to two or three o'clock. The controller was flagging up the dead end near enough all the time and the pressure switch was kicking in. And then in the end, what we found was the hose from the outlet of the tank was running underneath the underneath the van and it was squashing the hose. It's standard garden hose, which is 12 or 13 mil. It was literally squashing it in half. And then once you started that problem out, the controller was doing its job. The controller was working fine after that. So those are my top two tips. Now, check the fuse holder and then check the outlet of the tank outlet going to the pump and then the one going to the reel as well, just for reference, because when you're driving about, you know, sometimes something might just slide or fall on top of your outlet of your hoses. So that's uh, that's the new video from Deer Components. Thanks a lot.